The daggers have been drawn as lawmakers Ibrahim Semujunganda and Mohamed Nseriko trade salvos over the house expenditure. Some politicians claim Nseriko, under the veneer of being a regime critic, is a Trojan horse who has received money from the state he is giving to opposition MPs to placate, placate them, while Nseriko accuses his colleagues of a smear campaign to depict that they stand on a moral high ground. On the spot night, is Kira Municipality MP Semu Junganda and Kampala Central MP Muhammad Nsereko. Honorable Semuju Ibrahim Nganda and Honorable Muhammad Nsereko, <coughs> welcome. You're on the spot tonight, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me begin in an unusual manner that just in case you disagree, disagree honorably and not horribly. So what, A recent what, what does that suggest? that you can disagree, that members of parliament disagree, that even in some parliaments they have even exchanged blows before. So I'm just putting the rules of engagement very clear. But I hope you will disagree, that one I know, and uh, disagreeing horribly is what I ask for. A recent trip you took, Honorable Sedeko, to the United Arab Emirates with a number of lawmakers elicited eyebrows. Some people have allegation that he used the money from the regime <laughs> to facilitate MPs, including those in opposition. And quite a number of people have said, with all respect, that Honorable Nseroko is a mall. <coughs> Are you a mall? Well, um, first of all, good evening, viewers, and uh, I would like to thank you for this program. To my fellow countrymen, of course, I take those allegations as baseless. And uh, what I have to say is that <coughs> this now invites Parliament into disrepute again. By saying a single member of Parliament, I can facilitate. Because you, first of all, you have to name those that said so. And those members of Parliament, you said I traveled with to the United Arab Emirates. Then I'll give you the transcender of what, when, where and for what purpose I uh, traveled with them. Please name them. Did you, did you travel to the United Arab Emirates? Go ahead. Well, I always travel to the United Arab Emirates. When, when you As colleagues, many me, times. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and name that, the, the trip that, well, I, that I've traveled. Because I've traveled via the United Arab Emirates to go for my lesser pilgrimage. I've traveled with various members of parliament to go for my private trips. I've traveled for official trips. So name which trip you're I, talking the about. The other day, I was reading this story from the Observer, Honorable Monsedeko. There and, you go. And, and they said, Monsedeko, money excites. Yeah. And, 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 that, and quite frankly, you say you sponsor yourself, which is okay. But, but there's that uh, twitch of Muhammad Monsedeko uh, with some money. My brother, Kamala. Uh, let, let me, let me, oh, let me build this, Honorable Monsedeko. Uh, and and they, they, they claim that you took seven MPs. <laughs> but, but you have the money, that's okay. But we, we know in this town people who had money, like the late Mulwana, at least they were selling milk. What, what does Just a second. The, the issue is, before we even go to that subject matter, you're saying something that is baseless. And what was the response from those honorable members of parliament from the same story? Seven members of parliament. Go ahead. Who you went with complete the, the story Emirates. in the observer and how did they respond you haven't given any money to they any themselves said i did not sponsor in a single person's trip now you work and attend tv and after you've had anything you go out with the following honorable sister namju which part does she belong to NRM, Honorable Muyanja Senyonga, NRM, Honorable P Karwanga, <coughs> Independent, Honorable Katoruwama, Independent, Honorable Zake, Independent, Francis Zake, Independent, Mr. Musasizi, who is an individual, he's doing his own work a partner to Honorable Sise Namuju travels with us, and one Ahmed Mulema, who is a friend and a cousin 
travels with us on a holiday that was about five days and we're in Italy and we're in Germany and we're in France and we return on a holiday. Therefore, I'm trying to ask you, <coughs> is it because people are not used to traveling for holidays? Is it a very new thing? And the answer is, it is probably peculiar. Not very many people in working institutions go out to travel on holidays. I do it. My oh. comrades and colleagues who supported me after the elections of deputy speaker. Actually, this trip started when we were du during the rigorous campaigns of deputy speakership. Then we came up with a team called 115. We created a WhatsApp chat group and we put it there very well. Who of you want to go for a holiday? Please go ahead and process your Schengen visas and you can go to the various consulates. Go ahead, Yo, the, process. The, 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 please. The, the other me, peculiar thing. Listen, thing. listen. The people listen, you because with. if the other if, peculiar thing. If you also add just a second. If you give out rumors, then it will not benefit the nation. Even the people you're describing, by the, the way, other respectfully. Mm -hmm. And we have to respect them because they have constituencies Definitely. and they are members of parliament. Now, you insinuate that these are opposition. The last one I forgot is Honorable Uta Maguzi. Actually, Honorable Uta Maguzi went and paid for his ticket. He was the last person to do it at the Emirates office. And you can go and cross-check with them. Every single person. I traveled business class. Some chose to travel economy because that is how much they could afford. Therefore, with due respect and without going into the details of every single person, and they paid for their hotel accommodations. Now, he who alleges must prove let me, let me you me. allege, just a second, and this is on national tele. He who alleges must prove the allegation. Well, the, with due respect to these honorable well, members you, of you, parliament. You, your own colleagues, your own colleagues. You name one. Your own colleagues. You name one. Your own colleagues have, have, have said that you took members of parliament, name seven one. of them, and that you give them money. Name one. L listen, that you give them money. In fact, when they came back, some of them are cruising in, in, in uh, four by fours that uh, they didn't have before. But Honorable Samuju, yes. you co your colleague <coughs> says you want or others to act holier than law. That you took a vehicle in the ninth parliament and probably you're even planning to take one. Are, are you just trying to take the public, you know, by <coughs> you see, to show that you are holier than law. I have said, uh, and I want to repeat, um, I don't want to claim sainthood. Because you see, someone who has just bumped into this show needs to understand the background. We started this parliament, <coughs> I think the first controversial issue that came before parliament was a motion by Nakifma MP seeking leave of parliament to go and prepare and later table a bill whose intention was to remove the term limits as they are in the Electoral Commissions Act. The term limits? Yes, because in the Electoral Commissions okay. Act, you serve two terms and you leave. So he said we should remove that. Then he said the, the ages, because you're supposed to retire from the various courts of law at a certain age. He said we need to revise and add some five years. I think that, that is the first um, controversial issue that was before this parliament. That attracted protests. You had, um, uh, I think there was a group of DP, they came and were loaded as usual, police pickups and taken. Then you had another group, um, of civil society, I think by women, including the owner of Miriam Ateme, they came, they were loaded and taken. That matter was stopped by the Speaker of Parliament <coughs> when he said, if you want to amend the Constitution, we'll comprehensively do it. That put a stop. You then had another public uproar about the expenditure of Parliament, <coughs> specifically when we traveled. And I am one of those who traveled to the US to attend UNA. I left, I don't know the actual number that went, but the story back home was that we had traveled to Yuna for what the public thought was, was, was a, <coughs> a useless trip. When I was there, I actually wrote 
and said probably as a country we need to debate the issue of travel abroad. And I gave figures as they are in the budget that every year, at least in this budget, we are going to spend uh, 36 billion shilling on travels abroad by state house. We will spend 20 billion shilling on the travel by parliament. And then there will be 6 billion here in finance, 20 billion, I mean uh, 30 billion here. So I said, that's what we need to be discussing. By <coughs> eventually, the travel, the burial um, money we spend on uh, send over of an MP and the vehicles, that became a public issue. And that's what attracted the young people to come and throw piglets at parliament. They specifically targeted some individuals for different reasons including uh, my brother, the Honorable Nsiroko Muhammad. For me, I entered this debate after the Honorable Nsiroko went on a TV and started attacking my party, attacking senior leaders in my party, attacking a campaign <coughs> that I have read. So I am not claiming sainthood. I have said I have also seen like anyone else. And I have said countries don't depend on the goodwill and the judgment of individuals. So you therefore can say Semuju has also traveled. Semuju has a vehicle, he had a vehicle in, in this experiment. He also have one. There was time we returned the money for NADS. So a, you've, a you've, you've just three. realized that you have, you have sinned so much, I but have now not, you have, have to repent now? Certainly, I, I have admitted. You see, I am a journalist. I keep writing. There was time we went to attend a workshop. We were given 1.5 million shilling. And I said in one month, it is possible at Parliament to earn 4.5 from workshops alone. I said, this, this can't continue. So there must be a stop. This is what I have proposed. In fact, on Wednesday next week, I intend to present a bill, I mean a motion in Parliament, and that motion seeks to introduce more or less like what takes place in Rwanda. Rwanda has a zero fleet. You take a government vehicle, it is recovered from your salary. And that's what you want to propose. At least as, as, a, as a part, that's what we have proposed. The reason I have aggressively participated in this debate was because my brother went on a rampage, abusing Dr. Abuse of SJ, attacking FDC, attacking Nguri in, in, in Trinawe, attacking almost the entire institution, attacking a campaign we've been involved in uh, since campaign. I say, no, I have uh, an institutional obligation to defend the FDC. All what he has said <coughs> is a lie. So I am not claiming high moral ground. I am only saying there is a problem. If you have people throwing piglets at parliament, listen to them. The same way you listen to the protesters against... Uh, uh, a motion by the Honorable Secretary Co wanting to remove the age limit. It should be the same way we listen to those who are throwing the pickets. I don't condone the form of the protest that they took, but they have a point which you must listen to. Take away the form uh, of the protest, listen to the, the reason that motivated them to come to Parliament. That's the point I have made. All right, all right. You, 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 okay, why not make that straight if you could? Uh, he claims you have attacked everybody, the, the party leadership of FEC, <coughs> and if that is so, why? Well, I don't remember attacking anyone in leadership of the FDC. I said individuals that have connotation with the FDC, including some leaders, who are rightly there. For example, the Deputy Secretary General of FDC, Mr. Harold Kaija. And I told you that by corroboration, it is very clear for someone to tell the trail. I was on another show on NBS, and I don't want to indulge into that. I said clearly that the trades clearly link these people to this, because I told them that at a court session at Buganda Road, those that came to stand surety, and from their pages where they post on social media, their Twitter and Facebook pages, they came out to say, we praise these people as heroes, we associate ourselves, and we shall bail them out. And if there is any opportunity, and you can go to their pages, we will come out and also do these protests, both as a party from Mr. Harold Kaija's post and Ingrid Trinawe, or as individuals. Therefore, if he thinks what they did was right, and if they think what they did was right in any form, why is it that they want to disassociate themselves with, with such a noble cause? Today, I heard that some of them came out and apologized, have not yet been privy, which is a very good form, which is a very good gesture. And we also told them, we are not shy to listen to you. For example, I'm the chairperson of the Equal Opportunities Committee. If you have any query, please walk in. We already had people from the immigration. We are going to have people from markets. We are going to have matters to attend to the unemployed urban youth, the street children, name it. 
the imbalances in job deployment, ETC. The parliament was still open. There are very many matters that are still open for us to discuss, and no one is telling these individuals that you can go away. By the way, you have a right to protest, and no one has told you no. Even when I was on NBS, I said, your right to protest is unabated. The manner in which you protest and select various individuals is targeted, is selective, is not a pure reflection of what you are talking about. And I mentioned all of them. Now, Honorable Munyanja Senyonga, what did he say? During the Kafero debate, he even presented on the floor of Parliament and he said that some of the judges that he met, it's unanswered, told him they were not interested in the bill, so the bill must be thrown out. Now, the issue was from the protesters that it is greed of members of Parliament, rightly so, and they want increased wages for teachers, increased wages for doctors, increased wages for police officers. Rightly so. Do you remember the reason for our indictment and expulsion from the NRM party? Was because we disagreed, the four of us, disagreed with the NRM party on the floor of parliament on a salary increment which they rejected when they went to caucus. We came on the floor of parliament, we rejected clause 9 of the bill then of the now act of the oil upstream bill, you remember? We objected to the presentation of a budget, of the budget, which you call the budget, okay? Of every, that financial year without increment. And you remember then, my brother, uh, right, Honorable Mama and Baba, they made that statement that if teachers cannot, they can go and rear pigs. And we told them, please come to order because this is what we promised in the manifesto. So now, okay. As a result of those, Honorable of all Honorable those factors, I'm trying to say this, yes. yeah, as yeah. a result of all those factors, we were expelled. Now, we were asking, were these people's demands genuine? Yes. Were the people they were talking about, the right people they were targeting, that's up to them. Now, so on the you go to your of, private okay, investigation. When we come today, on the issue of, of emoluments, on the issue of... Uh, well, wastage, because uh, those uh, people who are protesting were protesting against the wastage and greed. But on the issue of emoluments yes. and the vehicles, the yeah. two of you, do you stand on the same side? Because yeah. this no, no, is you. We, Listen, <coughs> do you stand on the same I, side? I'll give my because opinion. The people I think the, we are all members of parliament. You are, yes. And we are elected by our various constituents. In the last parliament, I'll give you my own history. I came in with a land cruise of 290 million in 2011. And even today, I drive one that is more expensive than what, than what you may expect. But the issue you're asking is if that money that was appropriated by the Ninth Parliament, because this money was already appropriated, and indeed, it's going to be credited on our accounts. We must be honest with the people. It is going to be credited. For every individual member of Parliament, they know how they spend this money. And I'm being honest. Well, okay. Now, the, there, is, others, there is a group that wants, <coughs> I suppose what I've heard from him, and the I, protesters, I, I, they want the parliament to be frugal, I, I'm not to spend that kind of money. I'm I'm so where do you stand on I'm that? I'm telling you, my view, we already appropriated this money. And therefore, it's going to be spent. The moment government... Th that question is passed. No, the I, present <coughs> question is, the money is going to be credited on our accounts. Now, in the future... We can debate policy that should members of parliament get cars, some of us, like me, actually even believe at times it is not necessary. Because I come from Kampala Central, I can afford a vehicle. But others, you see, we work as a team. We are parliament. I'm not an individual. There is someone from Kabong who has to travel to Kabong and not on foot. There is someone from Kabari. There is someone from Arua. So I have to put into consideration okay. that this individual, <coughs> just like, listen to me please, just like in 1962, when the newly members of, el of parliament that were elected in Uganda were given brand new Mercedes Benz, it's not new. The issue that people are talking about, that the budget is big, where does it emanate from? From the size of parliament. If we were 50, 
the bill would not be big. So, but on this today's now, now this is the reality on the debate now. This, this, that this, you think it is, is morally right? This is the reality for a, a, for a country, Mr. Kamara, that, and the economy that we have. Now listen to give you a vehicle worth two hundred million or more. This is I'm tr I'm trying to tell you what is on the ground, morally or immorally right depends on the person and the constituents that person is coming from. My people of Kampala Central, and I'm being honest. The same people that elected me, who pay, the, who who foot the biggest bill of the taxpayers, me in Kampala Central, have not said that you should not take that car. By the way, many people in Kampala Central, and of <coughs> course all over Uganda, live on less than a dollar a day. Not in Kampala Central. You see, because <coughs> you cannot they, live so in Kampala Central. Let me just <coughs> be fair and honest to you. You cannot live in Kampala Central unless you are a street kid. In Kampala Central, this is where you are, where you're operating from. And you live on less than a dollar per day. But many so, people in Uganda... You, you as a rich country. Many people in Uganda live on less than a dollar per day. But the pressure... But, but really, in Katanga slum... The, Katanga is not Kampala Central. Down here, you, Chivulu. in, old, in Chivulu, Chivulu. Down in old Chivulu. Kampala. What you call Chivulu, please. The old Kampala is, is, <coughs> is, is, is rich yes, of a, Kamara, of I, a I, middle I, class. Yes, but there are, people right now, there are people right now who are even struggling my to get brother, a meal. My brother, my brother, do not try to appeal to sentiments, because I know Kampala Central you're talking about. You're talking about Kagugube. Kagugube is where you have LDC, what you're calling LDC. At the moment, I'm telling you, I'm being open to you. You cannot live in that place and live on less than a dollar per day. So your people, because the your rent people, was, are, your people are rich. But this is a fact. You told me to tell you about my constituents. The rent there is not less than 700000 so you cannot definitely <coughs> you'll be is it, evicted. Okay. But the bigger okay, picture, just hold there. The bigger am, picture mm -hmm. in this is one that money was appropriated, and we do not want to have intellectual dishonesty here. This money was already appropriated. The members of parliament, like Honorable Semuju, will speak for the opposition. I'm independent. Okay, just hold it there. Just, just hold it. The just opposition, hold, just hold there. okay, just hold yesterday, it. Yesterday, some only, of them said they circle. will take the cars. Others said they will not only take the circle. cars. So That's a personal are, are issue. you fighting for a, a cause that is, that is already... You see, first of all, I am happy. Um, but President is surprised that the Honorable Nseroko, at uh, that time, I had not seen him on that sort of a rampage. I am happy he said he's not attacking FDC. That he's not attacking the FDC leaders. But those who watched him can judge, and I'll leave that matter to rest. No, but that, that's a fact. I'm Coming on the <coughs> on the issue of uh, the vehicles, in February 2005, Rwanda introduced what they called a zero free policy. What that meant, in fact, the first step they took was to auction 420 vehicles of the senior government who were having very big vehicles. They said this economy is a small economy. We still have people who can't afford a meal a day, who can't pay their school fees. What the FDC is suggesting, and it's a policy proposal that we make to parliament, is that the MPs, yes, like it happened in the sixth parliament, I can obtain... Just a moment. Honorable Honorable Sereko, let him... You had your time. Honest. You will the, respond later. The... No. I don't know. That's, I mean, that's just honesty. No, no, you, you can be patient, sir. That's true. I listen to you. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So you don't have to you be honest. Just so one, <coughs> you can one also at a time. The, 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 the proposal, you will have time. The proposal of the FDC of time is that the aware. proposal of the FDC is that you can introduce a motor vehicle on scheme. And it does not matter when it starts. This money has not been put on our account. If it is put tomorrow, it can be recovered on our salary. In fact, what Rwanda started <coughs> was to auction vehicles of public officials. After auctioning 420 vehicles, they now have a policy. I have said even the media has not been, um, <coughs> uh, has not been fair to those who are debating this issue. When you isolate MPs, they are going to be defensive immediately, like one of them is doing, now calling me dishonest. No, no, because you're the reason you're not going to the, put it the, there, the, the reason it's a fact. once you have a policy, you see, countries don't depend on goodwill of individuals. Well, we shall see. If you think they depend on goodwill of individuals, we had a, a policy, and the, one individual has been extending his stay in power. 
and you support him. Well, but the point, you walk the point, the talk <coughs> as well. The, the point is, you walk the countries talk. don't depend on goodwill of individuals. You set policies, you set laws. Because Rwanda didn't ask Kamara, will you uh, allow to surrender the vehicle or not? They said the policy from today onwards, we will not buy vehicles, people working in the government. Each person who wants a vehicle, you will access it, you pay it for five years. After five years, we will surrender the vehicle. If you want to drive it, you can drive it. If you want to sell it, it's your business. That's what we are proposing. It does not matter whether the money is landed on someone's account or not. Okay. Once a policy has been taken, this is what we're going to it do. begins working. Okay, before I give you time to respond, Honorable Mohammed Nsereko, let's take a break so that we can come back and then you have more time to respond to that. We'll be right back. Therefore, I'm happy. Let them shift the battle to me. Let's leave Parliament aside. I'm ready to take them on. Because mine are facts. If there is anyone ready to battle with, with facts, I'm ready to face you. I'm ready to take you on. I mean, the question should be to him. <laughs> Will you take the money for the car? Two, did you in the ninth parliament reject the money for the car? Period. And what did you use it for? Because it's clear. He was driving a Corona. Now he's driving a Land Cruiser. His is clear. The difference between me and him is I was driving a Land Cruiser and I continued driving a Land Cruiser to date. That's the cardinal difference. Okay? Now, he's trying to build a beauty picture. You see, we would have taken it in the form of loans. Who are you confusing? You don't walk the talk. If you want to say it, there is a flaw of parliament. Why didn't you come and say it? And what happened in the ninth parliament? And I still ask, they said they are against expansion of parliament. We were with Ibra Semujunganda in the ninth parliament. He voted for yes in increase in the number of constituencies. The answer is there. Doing the right thing, it will then not have bad publicity. But to hide, you continue doing the wrong thing and then attack the media so they don't highlight them. This is just a, uh, being a, the ostrich covering your head in the sun when the rest of the, your body parts are outside. So I think parliament should learn to listen. If a policy has received a public backlash, then we need to revise it. And I have said that the same applies to all the issues that have been raised within the media. If the public is uncomfortable, and the public has every reason to be uncomfortable, with spending 68 million shilling on the of MPs, who can reduce it? Who can reduce it either to five? I, I don't see, because it's not constitutional that we must come and bring police and play a ban and give them 15 million shillings because an MP has died. We can straight out take MPs and bury them in their constituencies. I don't think the quarrel now should be with the media that why are you saying we spend 6, 6 8 million shillings on the burial of MPs? Because you deal with a population that is very poor. I'll tell you each day I leave my home there are tens of people that are walking along the railway line in Chile and where you get it. They don't have 1,000 shillings to take them. I wanted to refresh your minds about the, the issues you talked about some days back. And uh, uh, clearly, you can see uh, you're referring to his past and, how, and your past, and you've, you've been taking uh, different lines and you've continued to live some kind of affluent style that you work for, I suppose. But shouldn't the debate be, considering our economy, really, 200 million for a car is a lot of money, and it should be at least in a, a loan form, so that that's affordable and the country can, and the taxpayers don't have a big budget. <coughs> now, listen, there are two schools of law. I mean, two schools of thoughts. One, we have three arms of government. We have the executive, that is the president and his cabinet. We have the legislature, that is parliament, and we have the judiciary. Now, all these three arms of government are given brand new cars. 
that is at the top leader. As a standing order, 4,000 CC. All right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, you have parliament. The question would be, why parliament first? But that would not be an entire question because the entire government workers, can we have, if you are talking of a policy, then we can take the radical policy like that of Vietnam, where they said, if you want to serve government, just know that government has no provision for transportation for you. We have this aggregated salary and there is no transportation. If you bring it as a policy, it is not a discriminatory policy to members of parliament. Then you can say that the only things we provide for transport are the social services. Let's save those funds and use it in development of social <coughs> infrastructure. For as long as you're coming to serve government, let's only enhance your wage, find your car, whether you want it for loan, if you want you ride a bicycle, if you want your job to work like in Europe. Some people ride bicycles, others, it depends. Isn't that what we priority. need? Isn't that what we need? I would have no objection. But However, what? any bill that would be presented on the floor of parliament that attracts drawing money from the consolidated fund, making amendments to those standing orders, you must have consensus from government that you, are, you must attach the certificate of financial implication. If we sit as a country and dialogue on that matter, this can be the eye-opener. That's why I was telling you, we have different schools of thoughts. For me, a member of parliament who cannot afford a car, this would be my personal, should not even go to parliament. This is the difference. However, <coughs> we find so, ourselves in a parliament where members of parliament... So, because, just a second, because you cannot afford a car, you are not affluent, the country should be denied yes, that person, yes, even, though you, have, the, the, even though you have the right... I'm trying to tell you, because if you need that person, then you're going to have to pay for him transport. Now, you're caught between two things. You don't want to give him a car, because even if you say it's on a soft loan, then he'll say, increase my wage to cover that loan. At the, at the end of the day, you'll be paying for the same car in installments at... With, with small installments. Because what I will do, and this is what I'm trying to tell you, which will be the honest view from me, that when you say that, someone will go and enhance their fuel allowances and say, for example, I've been getting, let's say, 8 million in form of fuel allowances. Then I'll say thank you very much. It will become 4 million extra. Then that 4 million extra, I'll be giving it to the car. To the, to, the, to the car seller, four million per month for eight year, for five years will be about 200 million. So you'll be doing the same. I'm trying to tell you something that is honest. So you're that's, saying your, your colleagues in parliament <coughs> will find a way to get that money no matter that's what? That's absolute. That's what I'm telling and you. And this is what the public because is protesting wha against. What happened? And that's I, what the public is and protesting against. I'm trying against. to be honest with these people that if you bring that policy, are you sure you will keep our wages pegged? Because if you say we take it from a loan, from our emoluments, will you keep them paged? And you say from now onwards, you can only earn 18 million shillings. So you are going to agree to increase the burden on a taxpayer but because... To, yes. Mr. Kamara, do you yes. want me not to have intellectual dishonesty to you? My comrade is saying they as FDC are going to bring a loan scheme. A loan scheme to acquire a car who pays for the loan, you from your salary, loan. So but why, why must you conspire to increase but I'm on, try, on the, on I'm the other things? I'm, trying to, tell, I'm <coughs> trying to tell you what other people do not want to tell you but will happen. Because then when that comes to that matter, then people will say, because when I arrived in parliament, our emoluments were not as such. Now they were revised upwards. One, because of the increased fuel costs at the pump that was not seen, foreseen by those people that had paged those emoluments at, during those commissions before at that level. This drew alarms. So is that greed? Or so, what? Uh, why, why would they no, be No, it's thinking, not greed. What is it? Because <coughs> that one is actual. If you tell me a little fuel costs 3,000 no, 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 3, no. shillings at that the I pump. Understand. Just a second. I'm being honest. It costs 3,000 shillings at the pump. Then... 
But I'm trying to envisage a you situation see, you see, where I you and I, I where you and I may be honest, others may not be honest. All right, hold it there. But as a policy, who will again pay? Okay, it is the, you, the, the taxpayer. Picture, the picture Honorable Sereko is presenting is that no matter what, we the taxpayers you must pay show even on, from my emolument. must show on. <laughs> that is the institution you serve, which is siphoning or which is you know taking away from us, even though we are feeling the pain. You are not ready. To, 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 to listen to our cry. And Why? if 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 it was the the sole authority in Parliament, I will actually stop Nsereko from speaking on the behalf of Parliament. We've received a lot of beating as a result of the way he talks. But that is because a uh, he will tell you I was driving and the cruiser, he will never tell you what he was doing. He will tell you now he drives a more expensive car. He will not tell you beyond being a member of parliament what he does. It's fine. If so the point the is, IGG has <coughs> the, what the FDC is proposing is not to make a go at parliament. We are suggesting, because look at the, the various reports in parliament. Every year Uganda spends 200 billion shilling on vehicle maintenance. So I have told you I have, uh, by virtue of my office, I have a vehicle, I have a driver, I have fuel entitled fuel, I have entitled fuel maintenance. All this needs to stop. When you ask Semuji to come here and claim sainthood, Semuji will not. That's why I've said you cannot rely on the goodwill and the judgment of individuals. It is policies that are but, going but, to But you know what you say, you seem so to the be point playing <coughs> for the gallery, yet you know what you're suggesting is not going to go through. No, that, 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 let me tell you, yeah. I'll tell you. What's by your plan February, to ensure that it goes through? Yet by in most cases, <coughs> you conspire <coughs> to increase on your emoluments. By February this That's year. That's one thing that you agree on as members by, of parliament by across the divide. It does not matter, by the way. It's not that we always agree. I'll tell you, we got money for NADS. Some of us refunded the money. But the others refused. In fact, I was telling Wafura, Actually, maybe, we, 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 maybe, 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 maybe the funding is not, is not just, a solution. A because that day we're just depending on the goodwill of <coughs> individuals and only 20 did. And that's why it needs to be a policy. A policy will restrain the people. If you ask them to volunteer, there will be few volunteers. And the policy does not necessarily target parliament. We've said we need to expand. The reason Rwanda started the zero free policy was not because of parliament. But because of all the government institutions to reduce abuse, to reduce uh, operational costs, to reduce uh, um, capital expenditure, and said what we will now do onwards is that every single government person in order of seniority will give you a vehicle, will cover that money from your salary. The Honorable Nsereko has say, said here, our salary and the monuments have been revised. I can tell you, even before now, the vehicles, the, the money for vehicles have been given to MPs. It is not true, as Honorable Nsereko says, that people from Nakapiriti, from everywhere, they don't have money to buy. That is only him who has capacity to buy a no, range no, I'm not saying it's Just only visit me. Parliament today, you will see the type of vehicles that are in Parliament, even before this money is given out. So the point is, Nsereko now portrays Parliament just as a bunch of uh, other serious no, no, people no, 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 no. who, when you say now the, you are, you are access a vehicle on their own scheme, they will go and conspire, which is a bad thing. And, and that's what I'm saying. It needs to stop. But you can't have a parliament that behaves that way. And because something is wrong, it does not make it right because those who are doing it are too many. That's the point. So on the policy of uh, the, the vehicles themselves, when you introduce a policy as parliament, that cuts across, that will go to all government departments, that will go to state house, just go on the road and begin counting the vehicles with UC. There was a time when Minister of Health had more vehicles than MTN. It did not matter how, my, how big the budget is. This is the level of indiscipline. If they buy a new vehicle for the PS, he will pass over the, old, the, the older one to a commissioner. A commissioner and so we, not, we don't even have um, a policy on who should benefit okay. from public transport. Okay, Honorable Nsereko. Yes. So, so okay. Mike, on, Mike, on, Mike, Honorable Nsereko is saying yes. Let Mr. that Mr. it cannot walk stop. The talk. He has two vehicles. Wednesday. One being... F no, 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 listen. Yes. You've been having this vehicle as a chairperson of Kosase. Yes. And you've had your own vehicle. Yes. Now, as opposition whip, you're given a vehicle. You're given a fuel card for three million. Yes. You're given three extra million. If you really, really in your heart believe, these guys protested since Friday and you failed the pinch. You would have come out and said, I give up my three million as the fuel yes. card and I give up 
my but three extra minutes. I have done that before. It doesn't help. No, no. I, I returned the money. Okay, that's the moment. That's I returned the money. We did it I for the marriage for now. and the divorce. What happened? Ma you remember the well, money for marriage and divorce? He's bringing a proposal uh, that uh, can target uh, everybody. Uh, everybody. I'm, 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 I'm not yeah. saying no. I'm saying... Now you so see. what what I require from when, when, okay. when on Wednesday when, 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 when we are feeling the, well, listen, the pinch we are feeling is not just an individual I get all for you or him me, the, it's the collective my difference collective. was me, my difference is my, me I'm different I told you for me I'm saying for everyone is having government at whatever level if we want to take the radical step we can go Vietnam style you come to serve government know that this is the wage. There is private sector. Do not expect yeah. a car. Then we save the 200 billion. We invest in a railway. But you you know, invest Kamara, in mass transport. Kamara, this is a serious matter. When is the next week? I am because presenting a the motion difference. calling for a loan scheme. I, okay, I, let's talk about the time. Honorable says he wants no vehicle. Yeah. Bring me, a motion. Me, me I'm saying, Bring a motion listen, as well. the difference between myself and Semuju, I'm telling you what will be acceptable in that house of parliament. Why do you think your colleagues cannot the, take the Semuju? Because Semuj, Honorable Semuju, my brother, which will on save Monday, on the taxpayer that burden. On Monday said the same thing in a press conference that we as FDC are presenting this. Hardly 48 hours had elapsed than all F, nearly all FDC members of parliament. And I task you, get this clip. Tomorrow go and record each and every member of parliament from FDC and get their response. So and I'm, I'm trying, I'm, I'm, yes. I mean, so I'm trying to tell so you, you, you want to play this again. The, the, so the answer, numbers in parliament. The, I'm trying to tell you, the answer will not be what Semuju, Honorable Semuju is saying. If it's a policy of FDC and not a personal policy, let him tell this country when FDC and which committee that governs FDC sat and resolved as then. Then members of parliament, because they sit as members of the opposition as well, they have a shadow cabinet, they have a lead of opposition, and I expect that the, this lead of opposition must away, be aware of this. Put them <laughs> under task tomorrow to give you an interview and explain to the nation whether they will take the vehicles and a loan scheme or not. Then you will audit all of so, us who so speaks the facts. Does but that if make it, it right? were a policy, mm -hmm. ah, but I'm trying to tell you, yes. if it were a policy, me, I would take, this is why I'm telling you, it has to be a consensus where all of us have to sit without divide, all the three arms of government, I'm telling you, all the three arms of government, then we discuss and decide who has to own a car, which car, at what cost, or if there is even another option of no car. I'm trying to tell you, for me, the best would have been no car. His is loan scheme. There is another school of thought, have cars. We all have to sit, and this must be decided democratically on the floor of parliament. Using That's the numbers for we're using that, you, that we already know but by the we'll debate we, I'm for increasing. Where I'm trying to tell you that honestly That's what we're going to you happen. may not arrive to this. Okay, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I'll open the line so that you too, wherever you are, you can call and make a contribution to this debate. And we know on which divide you stand. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Kamara. My guests tonight are Honorable Sereko Muhammad and Honorable Semuju Ibrahim Nganda. So now, um, you, Honorable Sereko, you seem to suggest that you rather do something that is practical, not necessarily to do something that is right. Now, that is me. I told you, if you want something that is right, and all, all, all options can be explored. You see, we are in a democratic country. I'm telling you, there must be equity. There are three arms of government, right or wrong. We have the yes, legislature, yeah. mm -hmm. we have the executive, and we have the judiciary. And the question is, does the executive have cars, brand new cars? They all have, all the three arms of government. And, uh, and at a higher cost. And, and there's a standing hours. order that they no, get no, 4,000 cc. And with, just with chauffeur driven. Uh, chauffeur driven, yes. serviced. So, and, and that's what second, your colleague is saying. Second. It should change. Just a second. Maintained, serviced. All right? Now, if you say you're bringing a loan scheme, it puts the burden, but you pay as well. Because if you maintain the same car of 4,000 cc, you have to take it to the garage, right or wrong. You have to give him a driver, right or wrong. 
You understand? And you have to pay for all other costs. Now, what is the difference? The difference is now you only cut on the burden. That you take it one at a time than giving it lump sum. Probably you can allocate it somewhere. But I'm trying to tell you there is another radical option. For me, that's what I say it first. If there was the first option, if <coughs> the so Ugandan public... Day, just a second. On Wednesday, I'll, I'll go ahead. Let, let me go ahead. Yes. If the Ugandan public thinks so, that we should go by that, please, every one of you talk to your individual member of parliament. And you give them those proposals. That for me from EEC, because every member of parliament will be speaking for themselves and their constituents, that for me from Chira, I've been advised, because for me I'm independent, he belongs to a party. We are waiting for what their party members will say. But um, can I tell you from here, my prediction is, and you can quote me, that very many members from the FDC will defer. Okay? Me, I would have wanted the policy shift of zero. I hardly think okay. I'll get anyone. So, but I'm, I'm trying <coughs> so to now, tell you the feasibility. Yeah, yeah, you, have, you, have, you have made your point very clear. I hardly think yes. I'll get anyone, whether from the executive well, or from the judiciary. But, but you, you, you have him. Accept. You have him. For as, zero. You have him. If I have, at least I, you're on the song. If I, if, if I have you him are, as an ally. If this is what you're saying is true, then yes. you're on the right together you, I, I of reducing not. the burden. On, so, <coughs> so on, on Wednesday, are you going to be his? I am bringing a motion. If I am bringing Honorable the motion, I am happy. So it's resolved. Sereko, if Honorable Sereko has said zero. the public no, he, for me, I'm for he will, zero. He will support for me. me I'm I'm no, no for me, I'm amend. And I will say, no single person that is serving government should expect the taxpayer to foot his bill to move in a car. Whether it's by loan or not, I'll amend his. No problem. Okay. So on Wednesday, yes. I'm bringing so that motion. I'll amend his okay. motion. Since I have someone bringing right, a motion. Right here. I, I, hope I, I, he has a second I am, I am I hope Honorable yes. Semuji has Semuji a second mm. You seem to have an ally now. I Absolutely. Am I am ah, just a second. Happy. I want to be clear. But, 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 an ally for amendment. To zero. No problem. Yes. I am That's okay. I am extremely happy because we've come this far. Partly because of the arrogant way Honorable Nseroka has been speaking and his no, group. But for me, my, my difference is the honest the other day, Let's the other speak day, one at a time. Yes, of course, you can be arrogant. You can be honest and arrogant. Okay, go ahead. The other day, one of your colleagues with whom you... you no, he's a close, member of parliament. Said one of your colleagues. Due respect. So he said, there is one who said we need 500, even mm, 200 is not enough. Another one said, uh, you can go and hang or have the vehicles. And you made matters worse when people saw you in pictures, in shorts, in grasses, wow. on the streets. Wow, you think you... Th I have you said you made matters worse. To you? And that's why I said, uh, no, I am not the public. Uh, you, I, I you don't just know which public account. you're talking so, about. And that's why I said, yes, we need... Even, even if we have had a background of a very ravish life, because we represent a country where 82% of the population are poor. They, they are unemployed. Okay. So you need to speak to them politely. And that's what I said. We've suffered part of this publicity because of the way we have been talking. So I am very happy today with the Honorable Nsereko. That so is not the one who was who talking the other day. Uh, exactly. Uh, so this is a... <laughs> Let a, me open the line. So so that, uh, Just a second. For yes. me, the happiness I have <laughs> mm. is that the Honorable Semuju has come out here and told the same public that the FDC, the FDC is presenting, and I repeat, and count him by his word, I have said so. And, if by Wednesday, okay. and I can tell you by Wednesday, I'll be ready. that the FDC mm -hmm. will not present that motion. You, well, and you'll have FDC. You're going to conspire. No, no, no. You'll have FDC members. Now, uh, have you changed already? Because you said you actually want to make his motion better. Me, I'll, I'll amend it. You, you said you Mr. want to make Kamara, it better. Mr. Mr. Kamara, hold us account by our words. By, by I'll Wednesday, have it amended. There will but be I'm motion. telling you and I'm telling the public. <laughs> he says members of the FDC before or within 48 hours, like he said on Monday, that for us members of the FDC will present this. Let me, and I'm telling you, no, members no, you of are, the FDC you are, are, are misrepresenting what I said. All right, let me, let me pick, the, let me pick uh, the calls. I'll pick the very first call online. Hello? 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 Uh, hello? Good evening, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Kagere Alan. Where are you calling from, from, Alan? Masindi. Masindi, you're on air, sir. Now, my complaint is one. Tomorrow, yes. I want those two guys to go on the floor of parliament and get one, why NMS has not procured drugs 
for hepatitis B. Two, why the parliament has not instituted a, 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 an inquiry about uh, HIV drug instead of debating land cruisers and coronas. <laughs> I okay. Okay. You, you, you've made your point, though. Uh, the land cruisers and coronas should be take a pause for a while and you need public service, uh, uh, service delivery. Deputy Patrick. Hello, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? Adrian from Makere. Adrian Makere on air, sir. There's one thing Mr. Anseleko is forgetting. Yes. Uh, I won't call him because I'm not a fellow MP at this tax legal. Uh, the third branch of government, which is parliament, they are voted by people, whereas the other two, they are actually not voted by people. So that makes a bit that's of a difference. And that's why we really care that they should not be spending our money on benefiting themselves. Okay, you've made, Adrian, you've made your point. Let me pick another call online. Hello? 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 Hello, Patrick. Good evening, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? I'm Raban. I'm calling from Bukoya. This is Mugende. Raban. Yeah. And yes, Patrick, but uh, why is Mr. Seiko hopefully think that cars must be of 200, 300, 400? There are some good cars of 60 million, 550 million, which can fit for, for these people. By the way, those in those circles of this type, they come from us. We are very poor. People are very, very poor. People are driving 10 million cars, 20 million cars. But for him, we just think that the cars must be of 200, 500. Uh, we are just happy for, for Semu Jurien. Okay, thank you. Our caller from Movende. I'm going to take two more callers and then we return to the studio. Hello. Hello, Mr. Kamara. Good evening, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? You're talking to Pastor Eddie. How are you, brother? I'm okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thanks for uh, for bringing your uh, Honorable Nseleko and Semu Junganda. Mm -hmm. I would like to ask your uh, Honorable Nseleko. We have a problem of hospitals. Instead of talking about vehicles, vehicles, the, even Nseleko has a better vehicle in Uganda. Semu Jui has a vehicle. All our MPs, they have vehicles. Why those people, they don't think about our people in the village, if we are there. They don't have hospitals, they don't have even schools, you see? So you are, you are, you are ashamed a lot. Thanks. Thank you. Let me take two more. This issue has come here on the debate because, it, to, 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 to for us the debate, because it was in the parliament. So we thought maybe they can... Uh, make some more clarification here, but I agree with you, service uh, delivery is an issue. Uh, Let me take uh, two uh, more callers uh, and then... Hello? Yes, uh, I, I'm very happy that you are discussing relevant issues to us, the uh, public. Uh -huh. uh, but for me, uh, I, 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 first of all, Mr. Seiko, the word is used uses it, but yeah, I, I, I don't know whether you understand what you mean. You would say that I am speaking the truth. Because fact is king. Now, if you think the truth of the other parties, the other parties have different problems and also different approaches. Now, Senator, after having campaigned, we are first from the campaign. He knows the needs of the people. And that's why he says, uh, that's why he says that that they, that they should not take luxurious cars. But for me, oh, this is my point of view, Mr. Uh, Mr. Semicho, or oh, whether I, I agree that you have a very bad concern. Because you know these people, they are very corrupt. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, let, me, let me take the last caller online. Hello. Hello. Good evening, sir. Good evening. What's your name and where are you calling from? I'm Samuel from Soroti. Soroti on air, sir, Samuel. Yeah, yes, I'm glad that you brought the two honorables for this talk show. Uh -huh. But the issue on board is that they are discussing about the cars, the mm -hmm. cars money, but what we hear is that the budget has already been approved. 
And uh, once it is approved like that, then this is disturbing the public discussing on the issues. So Nsereko is very right that they have already approved it and the money is there. If it is approved, why play on the public? Uh, because okay. then the uh, Musemuju is bringing players on board, yet later on they will go back and parliament where they want these cars. Uh. Okay, thank you very much. I uh, understand my producer is telling me there are so many callers online. Unfortunately, we cannot take all your calls, but I, I, I hear you. It's a question of time. So um, how do you respond to some of these? <clears throat> I can understand. And that's why I said the parliament needs to be polite when you are speaking to the population. Even some of us who are not as rich as in Seroko, where we live, you don't go telling everybody how much you have, how good your background has been. There are people who cannot afford a meal a day. There are people who can't take their children to school. But for MPs, there is a woman MP who said now, even 200 is not enough. We want 500. And it does not matter whether the FDC MPs have supported it or have not. The issue is, is this legitimate? Is this right? And I think we <coughs> can have um, <coughs> a starting point. When Mr. Museveni captured power here in 1996, he said even ministers will access vehicles. In fact, that time he said they will access uh, um, Nissan Rauli. They are at a level they did, I like a premium, yes, uh, a premium of today. We can go back there. We may not go to the extreme position of um, um, Ethiopia, but it, it is working wonders in Ethiopia because in Ethiopia they pay an MP two hundred dollar a month, and they give you it, uh, a card for house. public transport and a house. If I have seen it before, you cannot tell me I cannot depend and have a good start. And you can't tell me, I, 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 you're going to be surprised. I spoke to some MPs. MPs are also tired of being attacked right and left. They said yes, because the justification for many MPs is that why should another DC have a vehicle? Why should the cow have a vehicle? Why should uh, a permanent secretary have a vehicle, a commissioner, and so on and so forth? Once we have a broader policy targeting everybody who is in a public office, I think that matter is going to be, people are going to be shocked by parliament. I can tell you, because there are those who are very angry with me when I explain, say, no, no, you need to explain this further. Because, you see, we are making parliament a target of attack for no reason. For no reason, really. Because once a policy is going to affect everybody working well, for the public... Well, the issue is, even if you are not attacked, yes. the right thing is you should spare the burden, spare the people that burden and, and of carrying and a and heavy load, financial and, and heavy load, when they are already poor. <clears throat> and that's the point. And, and they that's don't why even have to attack you. That's why mm. I am uncomfortable with people like uh, my colleague here and others who say, will you take it, will you not take it? Once it becomes personal, and that's what I've told the media, once you write and broadcast about parliament, they will immediately become defensive. Once you are discussing a policy of whether we should have a zero fleet like Rwanda or not, then you're not inviting attacks from a particular section. And that's why the country should be discussing. If you look at this budget, um, we are going to spend more than 100 billion shilling on fuel. We're going to spend 200 billion shilling on maintenance. We pay drivers. We service these vehicles. And there is a lot of abuse like it is in Rwanda. There was, time, there was a media campaign by various newspapers. You will see... Uh, vehicles with public number plate carrying charcoal, carrying uh, goats, carrying uh, all the stuff. And you cannot, bar, yes, you can only stop that once you have a policy. When you call upon individual MPs, including Semuju, that there is money here for vehicles, Semuju will go and line up fast. That, that, that doesn't make it right. That's why you must have a policy because human beings can't restrain themselves. Even those who came here as liberators and said they will go tomorrow. It is now 30 years later they are not going. Because w if you want to depend on the goodwill of individuals, there are others who don't care. Well, there are others who... It, it appears today, Honorable Bonsereko is saying, he's going, he supports your policy, but we'll amend it. We'll amend it. To tighten it. To make it tighter. So it is coming when it's there. Now, to our fellow countrymen, this is my plea to you. Of course, we've heard, and you say there is a lot of expenditure that is wasteful. All right? And I agree with you. Let us go and look into that entire budget. We will start with this. There's a lot of wasteful expenditure. For example, very many cars that are dumped in different government sites and they are not auctioned on time. 
because of procedure of procurement A, B, C, D, and E. The cost of maintenance is also high. I agree with people that if we used this money to improve our health care, that money that we can save, it would be very important. But I disagree with the people that say that Parliament has never debated issues of health care. We passed the Cancer Institute Act and the Heart Institute Act in this Parliament, and the bill is waiting for assent. All right? We've talked about the issue of immigration and the issue of aliens that are within this country. There are very many issues we've addressed in that Parliament, in the various committees and on the plenary, from various members of Parliament touching your livelihood. What we apologize is that you may not have seen them reflect immediately as an impact on your livelihoods. But just like today, we handled matters of, uh, uh, just sorry, yesterday, matters of uh, hepatitis. hepatitis. And uh, recently, that was Honorable Cecilia Ogual was talking, you know, she even has a van herself moving all around vaccinating people in Dokolo. She even talked about it. That is a very good gesture. But we know our, this government has failed on a number of occasions to do or to perform its responsibilities. And we have the right to criticize it. So I differ from Adrian, my brother, who said that we elect you, we don't elect the other arms of government. Indeed, you elect us, but you also elect the executive. The executive is formed from us. So it's one arm of government, but formed from us. And each arm of government in the principle of separation of powers checks the other of the excesses. We as parliament have a fundamental role in doing that. Through legislation, Article 79 gives us that function to legislate and pass laws. But in passing of those laws, this is the reality. We cannot bring laws without involvement of government. Why? Because some laws have a financial implication. Bills are presented by government, though a member can present a private member's bill. Now, issues to do with finances in budgeting, in the Finance Act, are presented by the government. You can present a motion, but it will be advisory. And if they pick upon it, then they will embrace it and put it in the figures, in the policy statements, the budget speeches, then we address it. So it's not going to come overnight. As a proposal through no, a, no, okay. Just a second. <laughs> As a proposal through a motion, it will come on the floor of parliament. Whether it will bound the parliamentary commission, because it will be an amendment. Well, the, just a second. It will come, I think it will be an amendment come, to the budget it, act. It will follow the process like others, other policies I'm have been. But, I'm, I'm trying but the issue there has to be a start, right? I'm, I'm trying and, and that's the start to support. Triggering a debate and having a start on something that should look at the entire policy and in fact appointment of a committee to come up with empirical data because you might find yourselves cascading parliament saying 200 million because of listening to it but when they tell you that a car is bought let's say for an rdc we for, for a resident district commissioner which is not bad or good because they are paid three million they will also add you and then he's given a driver who is also paid a car is 180 million the driver is also paid, all right? There is given a guard who is also paid, all right? It is serviced every month at a cost that is not known. Tires are changed. At the end of five years when this car is written off, it has cost the government probably 900 million is what it will have cost you as a taxpayer. Now, if you adopt that policy from the empirical figures that we have, if you say let's switch and buy for members of parliament cars. Or we give them loans to acquire cars which they can leave or take at the end of the day. We must look at the financial implication. Where does the burden lie? Where will you shift the burden? Now, that is the honest view I'm trying to tell you. And this is <coughs> what will happen. When we go with Honorable Semuju, everyone will exp ask us one question. Where does the financial burden shift? No, there is no shifting. You see the assumption. Because, because you see, the assumption. For me, I'm saying all government cars. Yeah, but you see, okay. now, okay. I, I'm, you're, I'm you're trying to raise your, one thing. Just your, a second, as yeah, I wind up. You're telling the RRDC. You've made your point. Just a second. You're take, telling a resident district commissioner who is earning $3 million because you can afford that car 
and myself, even if it were on loan, because you would forego, let's say, five million and purchase that car at your own will. Now, you're telling someone who doesn't earn the same <coughs> as what I earn in another arm of government to do the same. Yeah, but so you if see, the yeah. policy <coughs> is overboard and you already have a standing order of 4,000 cc, how do you relate Must it to it that? Must it be 4,000? What, okay. what, what Rwanda did, the loan scheme is also extended to buy motorcycles. Why should another DC drive a vehicle? Well, that is another, another DC can ride on the a same motorcycle. will be asked by the electorate. Even at parliament, why should a member of parliament Even drive? at parliament, you don't have to drive a Range Rover. <laughs> you can buy a Corona. In fact, there are MPs here, you'll be shocked. Even when this money is issued, you'll find them riding in a, in a small, small vehicle because that is their choice. You see, alone is not compulsory. But we simply want, because Rwanda said we must also ensure mobility and efficiency. We want these people to move. So we will now extend a loan to you, but you choose the type of transport that you want, as so long as it will deliver you. How would so when you move on a motorcycle from Soroti and report back to station in Kampala? Does but he have the, to the, move between Soroti and but Kampala? I mean but, that but as you that is, you those of us should be debating action. about an efficient you public have, transport system. Have, that's you have, that's you what I told you in the beginning. And if you gave you me the chance to well. tell you I mean, about I mean, that, if you're talking about 200 no, billion... This policy, should, as you debate this policy, also talk about public transport lovely, system. Lovely. I absolutely agree with you. If you're talking of 200 billion, yeah, saved, let's say, because ours, this one is 60 billion for parliament for five years. But now you're saying 200 billion per financial year is about, uh, in five years, is about 1,000 billion. Correct? One trillion. One trillion. Now... One trillion, about three hundred million dollars, can start uh, an express transport within the city and mass transport and improve the railway gauge. Absolutely, I agree with you. I have no objection. If we saved that much, we can have a start. Isn't that what you are looking at? Um, is, we are trying. Is it, is it, isn't this the idea? Absolutely. It's, it's very difficult it's to ask uh, this government of Nsereko <laughs> to do anything <laughs> you see, sensible. Me, I'm independent. But my brother, you can um, talk about the government. Independence you're talking about. Oh, so you are, is, you the word independent. The, uh, the word independent is independent. So you're okay. Not, you're I'll not agree with you. To like should I have agreed with you on a certain matter? I'll disagree with you where you're derailing me. I am not derailing you. Okay. Just and I give you an example you, to where I disagreed you, with you. Okay. you belong. And I'll tell my brother where I disagreed with him. And this, this, this is uh, ca casual. Uh, but where I have to agree with him, I'll agree with him. There's, we there's, agreed. <laughs> there's absolutely no problem. So on okay. Wednesday, I'll bring a motion to parliament. But do, and you have said do, for do, you, you do are not, for Do for not zero. use it. Do not do the same like you said. You'll bring... Uh, you told the people not to register, and then you registered. So be there, I'll be there. Okay, no. let's uh, that in a concluding remark. Me, I'll be there. Let's, you see, the, let's, the, let's, the problem is that you also attempt to be speak there. For the I'll FDC. be there. No, I don't speak for yeah. the F. Oh, the FDC has its so because, spokesperson. Because okay, you, I mean, you mean the FDC told you, people not you will, to register? You will competently speak for the NRM. Me, I'm independent. And allow me, and allow I'm me. independent. Of course, you know you are not. I'm independent. You're independent in words. Okay, you guys, I think go along. If, if, <laughs> if, if, if I was NRM, I would not stand against Solanya. You are signed by NRM, are you not? Well, it's your choice. Did you vote? for me i did so why did you vote for a decision signed <laughs> for the, by the NRM? there can be a protest vote well, I, I, I was not in protest i have told you well i have told you you told try to give all allegations but what i'm giving are facts did you tell people not to register and you registered the answer is yes did we okay. tell people to register not to okay register? this is yes. what we're going to do our time is up honorable Nsereko, your parting shot tonight your concluding remark well my concluding remarks are that as a nation and as people, we have a lot to do. Well, government priorities may not match what we want. For us, we are saying, we will always give you our priorities. I'm independent. If you ask me about education, this would be my view. Someone has talked about the dilapidated schools, and this is something we've been discussing somewhere else. The pattern in Rwanda, that with the growing, with the growth on the drift to use of information technology. Even in schools at elementary level, children are using laptops and embracing information technology in order to compete with the entire world for jobs and for space in IT, innovation and production. 
we've not done that because this is not the priority of this government. Unfortunately, they do not put the funds where they should be put. Our role is to advise them during the budget. They do not accept. Some of us attempted to do that who were expelled at one single time because of objecting to what some people believe should be the way things are handled. Uh, the other thing, yes, social welfare and health care. If you adopted insurance for all, medical insurance for all, at a cheap price, just like Rwanda and Kenya has shifted and Tanzania has shifted, whereby we would guarantee that instead of banking on government to save us health-wise, everyone raises, even if it's 1,000 shillings, for health insurance. And then you can guarantee that you have proper social and medical okay. welfare. All right. We can talk about a lot on other matters we want to present, but also the issue of unemployment, both rural and urban, is a touching issue that we shall debate. Thank you. On my travels, there is something I discovered when we met the CEO of Starbucks, and this is a story I'll give you the report as I present it during uh, our, our tour in the UNA. He told us, we import $65 billion worth of Arabica coffee alone, not even Robusta. And Uganda was one of the leading producers. Unfortunately now, it's not. If we invested a lot of money in agriculture, having tractors at uh, sub-counties as a priority, boost our production in what we can export. Fruits and vegetables, another good income earner. I'll give you an example. Avocado. You know avocado? Very well. And everyone knows it. The cost of one fruit of avocado, for all of you that live abroad, you all see it, is two and a half dollars. Avocado here is rotting. If the government can put that money in cooperatives of people to start farmers, farmers, cooperatives of farmers, to start exporting fruits and vegetables. The demand, the world demand now for avocado alone is $18 billion per annum. The largest producer is Mexico, and uh, at the moment it's followed by Brazil and Philippines. We have a lot of avocado in Uganda. Organic food, the second largest producer per capita of land of organic food is Uganda next to India. But Uganda exports 0.2% of what it produces. Okay. If you, we you, used it, you made your point because uh, we are here to educate the public. I know. If but, we but used we have to it, use I'm trying to time. tell you how yeah. we can harness more money and even not yes. think of what we have. All right. If we used you, it you, to you boost you, you, and export you, and earn the dollar, I think everyone will be happy. There will be no pressure on the dollar and every wage will be resound. Your parting shot, Honorable. Uh, first of all, Samuji. I am pleased and uh, happy that the Honorable Nsereko who was attacking the institution of the FDC and its leaders <laughs> today what is the has said he was not attacking <laughs> the institution of FDC and its <laughs> leaders. The topic to do with that. I have also <coughs> I am also happy that Donald Bonseroko now agrees that instead of speaking and attacking protesters, he says you can even meet them in his committee. For us that was the problem. When people come to parliament, it does not matter whether they're FDs, where they're NRM, we must listen to them as leaders. The form of protest can be one that is, um, is, is, is untenable, but the message behind that protest, what motivates people to leave their homes to come and protest at parliament, is what we are supposed to listen to. Um, and on a broader, <coughs> on a broader note, we are not making these proposals to make names like some people think. There must be a starting point. You can have an economy now. If you look at the public debt, we've now borrowed nearly more than half of our GDP. Because if you look at the public debt, we are nearly about 10 billion US dollars. We are an economy of 27 billion dollars. You can't be borrowing. It's about 38 yeah, percent of what uh, we've borrowed. So you can't be borrowing. And then the public hears you. Of course, as I said, the owner of Unseriko said for him is honest. You can be arrogant and honest. Maybe because of his back up and says the rich man has been driving Range Rovers. But you speak to a population, nearly 80% of this population can't meet their basic needs. So when you are speaking to them, they don't want to know 
how rich your background has been, which type of vehicle you drive. In fact, for me, if it were possible, I would be walking to town. Because I've told you, between Chireku and Gweogerere and Chireka, you meet people walking to town along the rail line. That means it's possible. Because the colonial administration handed to us what at that time was a functional economy, was a functional administrative units. Today, we've collapsed many things. So every day, I, I, I even want to cover my head. You pass by people walking with their children coming to school. Someone who doesn't have 1,000 shilling to pay for a matatu, certainly they can't have 2,000 shilling for lunch and supper. Those are the majority in Uganda. Him is lucky. He says everybody in Kampala Centro is rich. Can, can, for can, us, can uh, food through thousand. For us, uh, for us, we represent people. Because we won't people, survive. Uh, majority who are, who, are, who, who are not rich. So that's why our language will, will be different. But also, uh, to many of I, your... I think you should address your point. Uh, to many of your colleagues uh, who are very close to you, maybe probably to advise them to stop speaking at people. Because if the, 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 the kind of arrogance by, by one of your close friends, uh, if people want to go and hunger, they can go or have vehicles, it, it, you actually make our work as parliament very difficult. Okay. Thank you very much, Honorable Semuju Ibrahim Uganda and Honorable Muhammad Sereko. Thank you for time and thank you for all of you who have called in here to make your contributions. I think this debate is going to continue. They seem to agree, but well, Honorable Sereko says he will make an amendment on the policy proposal that, that and, uh, and, 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 and they, is bringing. And the policies for bringing more income <laughs> and, to Uganda. And so this for debate will continue. There's, a, there's, a, there's still a line of divide in parliament, but we'll see maybe they will merge at one point. Probably that's what you want to see. Good night and God bless Uganda.